I remember attending church regularly as a kid and I used to hate it. Waking up early in the morning on the weekend to listen to some old guy lecture to me about some ancient writings about a demigod named Jesus was not really my idea of a good time. It still isn't, but I can't really deny that I got something out of my Christian upbringing. I remember being taught that God has a plan for all of us and that all that we do is because God set a path for us. I was taught to be thankful for the things that God has allowed to happen in my life that allows me to live the wonderful life I do. I was taught to count my blessings. I personally am agnostic, so I don't really believe in God in the same way that most people in my family do, but I definitely like the concept of counting your blessings. It taught me to be humble, grateful, and sensitive toward the plight of other people. Now, this is a concept you really would expect to be reflected a whole lot more in Republican right-wing rhetoric. I mean, these are the same people who make such a big deal about whether or not a president is Christian or not. They seem to make the most arguments on religious grounds, so you'd really think at least some class consciousness would seep into this crowd, but it really hasn't. I've heard people explain this by claiming that Bible-thumping Republicans aren't actually Christians. They just hide behind the Bible to justify their own bigotry and greed. The GOP Jesus video on YouTube is a great example of this argument. Truly I say unto you, whoever welcomes one of these little ones in my name might be letting in a murderer or a drug. Let's get her to a detention center, you know. I'm not really sure how much this reflects reality for all Republican voting Christians though. From my personal experience living in a Christian, Republican voting small town in Central Florida for a few years, most people seemed very genuine in their beliefs. The concept of counting your blessings didn't seem foreign to them either. The issue seemed to be less about acknowledging the concept and more about what is to be considered a blessing to be counted. The main difference between the brand of Christianity I saw in this small town in Florida and the brand I grew up with could largely be explained by race, location, and class. I'm black and grew up in Chicago. Compared to white Americans, black Americans are more likely to be Christian. This is even the case for younger black people. A more popular explanation for this is that Christianity has created a coping mechanism for dealing with the gross mistreatment and inequality that black Americans historically have faced and still do today. Now, I know that some of y'all don't want to hear this, but Martin Luther King wasn't a wizard who magically ended racism with his I have a dream spell. Dude got shot and things are still fucked up. Welcome to reality. So as I was saying, Christianity has been a coping mechanism for the inequality we experience in America. Because of this inequality, class consciousness tends to be more prevalent in black American culture. Now for the record, I'm not saying white people inherently aren't class conscious. I'm simply saying that class consciousness tends to be more prevalent in black American culture because we really aren't that far removed from systems of disenfranchisement like redlining or Jim Crow. There's a reason why the current Republican Party is white as hell and struggles to get support from black voters. Class consciousness has a lot to do with it. The real challenge with white Republican Christian apathy toward class struggle is that a lot of them come from cultures that make empathizing with people of low-income communities seem impractical. If someone is socialized in a socioeconomic bubble, it can be very easy to buy into the mythologies of American exceptionalism and capitalism. Many people genuinely believe that America is uniquely free and that there is equal opportunity for everyone. Many people believe that any and all societal problems can be fixed with free market solutions and that the American dream is this unique concept that any citizen can reasonably obtain through hard work. It doesn't matter that there are countless economists pointing out how free market economics is not designed to address income inequality or the other negative externalities it produces. Pointing out that citizens in just about every other developed nation enjoys more social mobility than we do in the states also doesn't matter. All they know is that things seem to be more or less fair from what they've personally experienced and that's all that matters to them. Many people take things for granted and assume these things are available for everyone else. It's very difficult to realize something is being taken for granted if a person has no meaningful interaction with people who do not share their experiences. These frames of thought make people boil everything down to stay in school, don't be lazy, and get a job. If this is all that's causing income inequality, then doing anything about it seems like we're just rewarding mediocrity. 
Another huge barrier to class consciousness is that the economic mythologies people buy into are intoxicating. They boost egos and people ground aspects of their sense of self in them. Material things and affluent lifestyles are representations of personal accomplishment. Pointing out how unfair America actually is detracts meaning from these representations. A Rolex watch can no longer be something a person is deserving of if they acknowledge the reality of class struggle. It's just a watch a person is able to buy if they have the capital to do so. Capital itself can no longer be viewed as an inherent marker of a person's work ethic or ingenuity either. Capital is just something a person can obtain if they have the opportunity and choose to take advantage of the opportunity. Acknowledging any other shit will result in the loss of cultural capital for people who benefit from the status quo. Many people, even some of us who are disenfranchised, assume wealthy people are inherently more capable, intelligent, and trustworthy. In this frame of thought, they have money in this even playing field, so they must be smarter or a harder worker than the rest of us. Essentially, people would have to completely reevaluate themselves and the meaning they place on things if they were to acknowledge the unfairness of income inequality. And that is the hardest part about all of this. This is why discourse about income inequality with people who take a more conservative stance on the issue tend to be a weird platform for self-promotion. Most conservative arguments about this topic have a very similar format. Step 1. Assume the person calling attention to income inequality is personally failing somehow. Step 2. Make the claim that they are just blaming other people for these personal failures. 3. Rattle off anecdotes about self-made success stories and claim that anyone can do it too. And step 4. Rant about how rugged they are. People who take this type of position have a very hard time fathoming that someone can be successful and critical of the status quo. In their minds, a person questioning any of this shit must be lazy. They think things are mainly fair, or at least in the US it is. Even the things they are willing to admit are unfair still isn't worth doing anything about beyond donating to a charity. White Republican Christians definitely are Christians, and they believe in the concept of counting your blessings just like any other Christian. The thing is that they have a much more narrow scope of things that can be considered a blessing to be counted. They may be thankful to be alive and that they aren't handicapped in any way, but they don't seem to consider the privileges that allow them to work towards their goals as a blessing to be counted. They just assume everyone else has the same foundation as they do. So, as tempting as it may be, I think people should avoid the whole fake Christian position when they engage with this crowd. It really is hard to know what a person's true intentions are and what they do in their personal life. Just because a person has blind spots in their understanding of the world does not make them any less of a Christian. This position is also just very insulting and only serves the function of making the person who points out the contradictory nature of Republican Christian views seem cool and smart to people who are already in the know. That shit is not going to change anyone's mind. But that's just my opinion though. I'd love to hear what you think is the best way to combat right-wing apathy towards class struggle. Please leave a comment below to join the conversation and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, it really helps if you hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so that you'll actually be notified when I do release new content. Thanks.